Well, uh, went back to Ollie's again, despite the uh, all the quarantine and stuff. Uh, we once again we just had to sort of get out and just walk around. We put our masks on, get the hand sanitizer, and uh, they have a number of these uh, mystery comic book packs again, which I enjoy getting. And uh, I was intrigued when I saw two uh, two episodes from this Dark Lords of the Sith. So two out of six in one go, that's pretty good. Which is a comic I've never heard of or read, so uh, all I gotta do is find. I've got number one and I've got number four, so all I need to find is two, three, um, and five. So that's good. And I don't know what else. There's, um, there's a Battlestar Galactica comic and there's an Iron Man annual. So not bad. I think I'll start with this one and if it's... A whole video then I may do um, this one in, a, in another video just to sort of stretch it out a little bit but um, let's see what we got in here I hope that's not too loud. Well, first we've got um, a little insert. Some PG-13. So, okay. Um, let's start with... Uh, this old Iron Man uh, from 1986. I always like the older ones. Um, I have a little set of nothing but the older ones on this kind of newsprint type of paper because these are the comics that I remember as a kid. These, This is how comics looked when I was young at the age when I really read them, you know, as a child it, before I sort of appreciated the art and, and kind of like where I'm at today where comics are more of uh i mean in a way in a weird sort of way they've kind of transcended into like an art form and on the and you know in the back there's your your uh your ad for uh jolly ranchers watermelon along with uh murray and leaf and it was you know 1986 you know edgy And I saw this ad a lot, which was the uh, old M&M's ad, and these M&M's are not red, they're orange, because if you lived through the 80s like I did, red M&M's for a long time did not exist. There was a, a, a rumor that, uh, that the red dye caused cancer, so it wasn't until, I think, the 60s or 70s they stopped making them and then they brought them back in the 90s I think but in the 80s there were no red M&Ms in fact there was just a few colors there was orange yellow brown light brown and green so they didn't have blue they didn't have red they, they have so many colors now it's they're white and stuff so this is an Iron Man comic and it starts out with a frog it looks like Cincinnati frog or whatever I don't even know if that's part of the comic, <laughs> but there's an ad for Bonkers. I remember that. Uh, that Bonkers commercials were pretty funny. To order your comics. Let me just say another thing. Um, and I was thinking about this. Comics? They, when I was a kid, at least, and I didn't really live in a big city, so maybe I'm wrong about this, but I don't remember comic book stores when I was a kid. I remember buying your comics on a little spinning rack at the grocery store. I don't remember comic book stores. You could order them, like, you could subscribe to them, like with an order form in here, 
or you went to the grocery store and bought them, or you bought them at a 7-Eleven or Circle K, but I don't remember comic book stores. I, I think that's a relatively new thing. This is a Fantastic Four. If you watch my videos, you know I'm, I'm a Fantastic Four fan. I, uh, I have the Fantastic Four figures. I'm a fan of the, um, good old-fashioned Fantastic Four. I, I didn't really like Fan Four Stick, the movie, but, um, I like the original Fantastic Four. And then I do have this set of Marvel Legends Fantastic Four figures, which is one of my favorite complete sets. So, a little side there. I had that Iron Man action figure, but I gave it to a friend. That version of Iron Man, this classic comic book version. There's Cyclops. So we got the X-Men in this too. It would be interesting if we'd ever do a uh, Avengers X-Men crossover. Like they've been teasing. That's uh, Nick Fury from the old days. They have quite a few of the superheroes in this one. So I guess there were comic books. There's look, Mile High Comics. So I guess they existed. They just weren't as prevalent as they are now. Kind of like coffee shops. Like I didn't sit down and, ha and go to a coffee shop, and a real one, until the 90s. I never, you know, where you get an espresso or a cappuccino. I never saw one until the 90s. Like they just didn't have them where I lived. Now you can find them everywhere. There's Gumby and Pokey. Okay, so that was that one. Now we've got, this is Michael Turner's Fathom, a more modern comic, it was two fifty cover price by Top Cow. Uh, in, interesting ad for uh, this figure available only, very cool looking figure. Um, Michael Turner's Fathom, and that, I guess this action figure, which is... I'm um, super rare. The Aspen Matthews, Michael Claiborne, more. Um, the only way to obtain this exclusive figure is to rush out to your local comic book retailer before they're gone. It does look like a cool figure. I guess I missed the boat on that one. I bet that'd be really expensive on eBay now. Uh, top cow in it. Let's see. It's on this very cool paper stock that's uh, very uh, matte finished, which I like so it doesn't get glare on it. I like the artwork. A lot in this, like the submarine. It's very good, very good artwork. I 
like that sound when you're the first person to open a book or a comic and it makes that cracking sound. It's a Batman ad, which makes me assume, in my limited knowledge of comic book stuff, uh, that Top Cow is related to DC Comics somehow. And, and I'm sure you've guessed I'm not a full-time, I guess you could call me a normie, I'm not a full-time comic book person, so I don't know every single character, every single thing, but I do enjoy looking at the art. And see, a lot of these comics that I review for my channel, I end up, I have a friend who owns a comic book store and I end up donating uh, the, the, the copies to him. But I keep some for myself. Like, for, for I will always keep one of the, these older comics. And then I like to keep ones that I really appreciate the artwork on. And this one is really rating high because I really like the artwork. So I keep, I keep a small amount of things for myself. But um, something about the matte finish of these pages and the really, really detailed art makes me kind of like it. So I might actually, and this old action figure ad on the back, I think I might keep this Fathom too. So here's another interesting one. This is by Eclipse Comics. It's an older issue. And it's DNA or D and Agents. D and Agents. Um... America's number one team. Congratulations to Mindy Newell, Lee Weeks, and Ty Templeton on the new wave. So this is, might be one of those like more like fringe comics. And these are interesting too. Just to have. What's black and white and red all over? Kits and cats. It's a black cat and a white cat. This is another one of these Eclipse Care comics. Uh, Rocketeer is about the only thing I've recognized from this. Interesting. I see. That's just an interesting little relic. The next one is another one I've never heard of. It's um, Zin. Zin Tyra, I guess. It's a little bit covered up here. Let me get some coffee. Oh, that's the uh, Sam's Choice House Blend uh, for the Keurig has a very unique taste. I really like it. I like it bearing a lot of the name brand stuff. This is uh, the Victorian ad for the Victorian on the back. It's got uh, a fold out. Zindra. Zindra 2.0. Pretty good artwork again. So far, I've really liked all of these comics so far in this video I've been doing. Um, now my these are my all be keepers because I'm just digging all of the art and 
they all look interesting enough where I might want to sit down and read and see if I, you know, want to invest in getting a whole story for some of these. Interesting. Zindra. 2.0. What's next? Raven, the Pirate Princess. You know, I'm, I'm, another thing I'm liking about this is so many of these are obscure. And this is Action Lab comics. I, and, you know, you had Top Cow and Eclipse. So we're seeing a lot of really... Um, they, they curated a pretty good selection of obscure comics here because I haven't heard of hardly any of these this is a, a quote from Tom King who's you probably heard about in the comic industry pure awesome comics from page one I felt like I was with Jupiter Jet soaring and smiling eager for the next adventure so that's a pretty good blurb this is a little bit uh, I like the uh, the parchment Sort of cover pages. I like that a lot. That was a, like a mythology comic. Very colorful. Once again, this is just interesting because it's so obscure. This is like something that's not very well known. There might be a good story in here. some concept art and notes like that interesting I've never heard of that okay next is awake another one by action lab uh, three rivers comic-con Pittsburgh Pennsylvania so this might have been like a special uh, I don't see a price on it so it might have been a giveaway too whereas see this one has a clearly has a price this one doesn't. I bet this was like a free comic. Celebrating 30 years New Dimension Comics. Awake. Com completely different. All of these comics have been totally different. So it's pretty interesting. Action Lab Dog of Wonder. One thing I will say is this free comic was printed on um, much uh, cheaper paper than the other one by Action Lab. This one. This was printed on really good quality paper. And this was printed on 
really cheap paper. But that's probably to save for obvious reasons, but it's interesting too. That's how they can afford to, like the cover also is very thin. And this cover is very thick. Next we have the Victorian. Um, very thick. Not a lot going on. Uh, uh, just your price. Um, it's got a fold-out cover. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. Ooh, good artwork. This looks interesting. Now this looks like something I would, might want to start reading. Cyrano de Bergerac. And it's, it, you know, it's got a, like a flashback to the 1880s of Victorian times. So this looks like an interesting story. You got Paris, the Eiffel Tower. I don't know what this is about, but it looks kind of cool. And some color pages or some alternate covers or Got after Zendra, which we looked at. Very interesting. Another one I've never heard of. Justice Incorporated, The Avenger. Dynamite, number five. Um, Justice, The Avenger. By Mark Wade, Christopher Sicaria, Ronaldson Fear. It looks like it takes place during the Great Depression. Like Gangster Wars. Graphic. James Bond 007. The comic series. The artwork in this is really cool. I like it. Jingo and Zorro. Red Sonja and Conan, The Shadow, The Spirit, Voltron. There's a lot of cool titles here. A Train Called Love. Vampirella. Grumpy Cat. What is this? This is the fall of number one. Oh, Civil War. Civil War Two. Well, this is a famous one. That Hulk doesn't look so good on the cover. I you know Civil War is much different than the movie we saw. We got the characters here. It's Captain America. See, I think Captain America died in the first Civil War. And then, so that might be Bucky Captain America, or maybe he's come back to life. And then we got Silver Surfer, um, Deadpool. The Thing, Captain Marvel, Cyclops. I don't recognize everybody.
This reminds me a little bit of the scene from the movie when Spider-Man steals Cap's shield, but obviously this is a different Spider-Man, different shield, and a little bit more violent. There's Doctor Strange. I think she hawks in this. Oh, Marvel Legends. I do have that figure. Um, the Juggernaut, I have... Well, I have the three and three quarter scale Juggernaut. As far as these guys, I don't have any of this wave. With Rogue. Um, there's Dead... That would have been a good wave to have. Cable, Deadpool... Phoenix, Rogue, Havoc, Iceman, Kitty Pride, and Wolverine. That's one heck of a wave. And then you get Juggernaut if you get them all. That would have been a good one. But I have my share of Marvel Legends, but uh, I'll have that one. So we finally come to the Tales of Jedi, and it's uh, packaged, bundled up with a collector trading card, which is cool. I can add to my trading card album. Um, I am going to open this. Um... If it was in a, you know, a comic pack at Ollie's, I don't think it's got a heavy second market value. And besides, I think I want to read it. So, it's number one. I can get started on it. If I like it, I can get number two. Probably pretty easy. It's in there really tight. So first, uh, we have a Star Wars Galaxy trading card for Dark Empire 2. I have some Dark Empire action figures, I think. At a glance, when I look at this card, I really don't even recognize anything on it as being of Star Wars. Except for Stormtrooper. If you were to tell me this was Star Wars, I wouldn't even guess. But the card itself is interesting, and it'll... Find a place in my train card album. Star Wars is taking the galaxy by force in October. From comics to books to trading cards to magazines, the battle for the galaxy is coming your way, Dark Horse, 1994. So this was about three and a half years before uh, Phantom Menace. So we got the, the text scrolling introduction here. This is something that they existed that existed in the comics that they brought into the uh, movies. The uh, these cubes, um, <laughs> there was definitely in the Clone Wars series, and I think at least one of the movies. Um, and now I can't remember what they're called again. Um, but uh, these information cubes. Oh gosh. So, there were some elements from the expanded universe that made their way into um, the cinematic universe. I love how the paper this is printed on. Holocron, yeah. See, the Holocrons looked like this and recalled this in the comics, and we didn't really saw any of that until... The movies so that's pretty cool so they did take elements from the expanded universe and added them to the movies so there's a lot of um i mean that's that's always cool when you read about something first in in a comic before it makes its way into a movie or one of the cartoon shows so far as i read this it doesn't seem like star wars at all They got lightsabers. <laughs> but 
but I think this is like early mythology of the Jedi rather than, uh, you know, current with the movies. So this might be something I would like to read because it looks like a lot of the elements that were in here made their way into the movie. So I think I'm going to make it a point to look for episode two of this. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, end this video. And um, I sure hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for visiting my channel. And uh, please, uh, if you want to continue to hear about my videos, click the bell icon. And uh, if you haven't done so, please subscribe. And I hope you comment. Uh, I'm I'm still answering comments. I'm a little slow sometimes on answering them because I'm working uh, at home full time, maybe more than full time, and um, so. But I'm doing my best to get everyone answered and and get the videos rolled out. So, anyway, keep tuning in. Bye.